Hey everyone, welcome to Aniprop. Today we have an interesting video. This is a 3 for 1 special. Today we're talking about all the original anime written by Jun Maedo. So that's Angel Beats, Charlotte, and the newly released The Day I Became a God. Hit me with a like and subscribe if you like the video, and without further ado, play the intro. So, my entry point for this threesome of anime was Charlotte. I had heard a lot about Jun Maedo's stories, primarily the fact that there are severe pacing issues and drastic tonal shifts. So basically, this anime, his anime are emotionally draining and narratively confusing. Despite that, the reviews for them are relatively good. Charlotte follows an ability user called Yu Otosaka, who for years has been abusing his skills to inhabit individuals for short periods of time to cheat on exams. He starts out a bit like Lelouch in Code Geass after obtaining Geese powers. Otosaka is arrogant and kind of scummy while pretending outwardly to be studious and diligent and a rising star. After cheating to get entrance to the most prestigious high school in the area, he then targets the prettiest girl at school and uses his powers to put her in danger. He then rushes in to save her, gaining immense favor. Eventually, Otosaka is caught up to by Nao Tomori and her student council of ability wielders. He is forced to help them capture other ability wielders like himself. This is a great premise and the show would have no problem if this was all there is to it. But as with any Jun Maeda story, the twists and turns shift the dynamic quite a bit. Let me break down the primary narrative and pacing issues. In order to do this, I'll have to reveal story details. Careful for spoilers ahead. The story of Charlotte can be broken down into phases, five to be exact. Phase one. Otosaka using his powers to climb the social ladder. In this phase, the narrative is similar to Death Note or Code Geass, where we see a relatively intelligent protagonist outmaneuver the unwitting environs to execute his schemes. Phase 2 Otosaka working as a member of the student council to capture ability wielders. This stage of the show is episodic. It reminds me of Darker Than Black in this phase. It's a monster of the week show with each new ability wielder presenting new challenges that the council must overcome together. Phase 3 Otosaka goes rogue. After losing his sister, starts gang fights to take over the city. Now the anime becomes something like Durara, where territories and area leaders become important. Phase 4 Otosaka becomes aware of his brother Shunsuke's ability to time leap and change the, the past. The anime quickly turns into a time travel story in this phase. Not exactly like Steins Gate or ReZero, but more reminiscent of the origina original Terminator film. Phase 5 This is the final phase. Yu goes on a quest to purge the world of abilities after discovering that his ability to inhabit individuals actually lets him take their powers as well. Now, all of this is amazing, but here is the problem. Charlotte is a 12 episode anime. Let me show you visually where the phases start and stop in the episode run. As you can see, the only phase which received decent screen time is the monster of the week phase. Because of this, it's the most memorable segment of the anime and could realistically have constituted an entire season without getting any deeper into the story. The other phases feel rushed. This is especially damaging for the final phase which seeks to conclude the narrative. These narrative flaws are actually a distinguishable part of Jun Maedo's shows. Rolling back the clock five years, Angel Beats was released. 
Though the animation is a bit dated, it's still watchable by modern standards. This one has an even more wacky plotline. It's essentially purgatory, but surprise surprise, purgatory is modeled like a high school. The humans are not ready to pass on to the afterlife. They form a band of high school misfits where they fight against Angel who endeavors to make the humans pass on. The other inhabitants of the school outside the main cast are non-human entities. You can call them Philo, so it's basically the same as any other anime occurring in a high school. Despite the spectacular plot concept, Angel Beats suffers from mostly the same narrative problems that Charlotte does. The short episode run means some terrible pacing. This becomes super apparent when the anime hits us with strong emotional payoffs that are largely unearned. This for me personally broke my suspension of disbelief and had me thinking what rubbish am I watching. Let me give an example. In episode 6, Ayato, having been made the new student council president in the previous episodes, quickly becomes the main antagonist, where he attempts to detain the main cast. Within a matter of a few minutes, this escalated to a large-scale battle with the main cast. They are all slaughtered, I mean, they can't die, but it's a vicious battle where the main cast clearly loses. Resolution comes shortly after this, when Otanashi appears enters the carnage. He proceeds to hug Ayato and acknowledge him as an individual, you know, anime style. During this, we are greeted with a quick flashback of Ayato's past and what brought him to the purgatory. This scene almost made me stop watching the anime. It made no sense. For one, this guy became the primary villain and scum back to supposedly sympathetic case in like 7 minutes. That's jarring. Then there's Otanashi's reaction. He just came out to see his friend slaughtered and his first reaction is to hug the perpetrator? Get out of here with that rubbish. On top of that, he can't even see the flashback that we could. So how is it that he knew all the right words to say to the su supposedly sympathetic villain? This example is indicative of the greater narrative problems the show has. In episode 10, there's a marriage proposal between two characters who have hardly graced the screen. Their romance seems unearned and uncharacteristic. This moment would have been special if there was just a bit more time put towards developing the romance. That said, the anime hits and misses with these emotional moments. For every unearned one, there is one that slaps real hard, as long as the viewer has the patience to sit through the misses. The story also picks up at points, and in the end connects with the emotional moments in a believable and somewhat earned way. I like the way Angel Beats is written. Unlike with Charlotte, the ending is ambiguous and leaves the door open for lots of conspiracy and interpretation. Ordinarily, narratively, this could be considered a flaw, but because of the short time available in the 13 episodes and the amount of explanation required to get a super specific ending, we know that this approach works better. They did that with Charlotte, and in my opinion, it did not work. In relation to the theories surrounding Angel Beat's ending, that's a whole video by itself. You can let me know if you'd be interested in that. Moving on. The most recent anime in Jun Maeda's trilogy is The Day I Became a God. This anime starts out with incredible comedy and hijinks, but at this point we are seasoned Jun Maeda viewers. So we aren't fooled by this light-hearted comedy. After the first episode, I put my guard up because I know that the tone shift is coming to cause emotional damage. I wasn't about to be caught out again. Just like the two others from Jun Maedo, this one starts out with not much explanation of the world or its mechanics. Yota is playing basketball when he meets a young pink-haired girl who claims to be Odin. 
She is later discovered to be Hina and displays such otherworldly powers that Yota cannot immediately dismiss her claims of, of godhood. The plot initially centers around Yota attempting to confess his love to his crush Izanami. He does so using the assistance from Hina's god powers. Hina also tells Yota that the world will end in one month, and the anime gives us a counter at the end of each episode so we can see how close we are to the deadline. This Junmaeda story benefits from having a significantly reduced cast in comparison to the others. This anime also has a more slice of life feel, but in typical Junmaeda style, out of nowhere, episode 5 swung hard with the feelings. I got hit hard in the heart. Yota uses Hino's powers to resolve family issues between Izanami and her father. I'm talking about serious stuff. They make resolutions and are finally able to move on from the death of Izanami's mother. This hit me particularly hard seeing as I was practically hormonal now sitting through three Jin Maeda stories back to back to back. The complete tone and dynamic shift from this story occurs about episode 10. When the audience gets a better understanding of Hino's powers, how they work and the true consequences around them. The difference here is that unlike the other stories, we had a countdown to the dynamic change. This is good, as I was able to mentally prepare for it, and it doesn't come off as a cheap twist. We can copy and paste all the criticism from the previous two and attribute them to this one. His stories always feel as if they're too short, but I've come to realize that it isn't that they're too short but the scale of the changes in tone and style are too much. These shows pull so many 180s that it's like a Japanese mountain road. If the shifts were more slight, he would maybe be able to tell a more congruent story with the limited episode run, evidenced by the fact that there are several 12 episode masterpiece anime, even 6 episode masterpiece anime. Despite the criticism, however, I did enjoy all three anime, but I am now depressed. I believe I have overdosed on Jun Maeda. Help me. I will have to watch copious amounts of Moblob anime to recover. I'll probably start by re-watching Dragon Maid. Thanks for watching this. If you made it all the way through to the end, like and subscribe for more, more like this and I'll catch you next time.